Hi, I am back with a short review on Songs for the Missing by Stuart Onan. Uh, this book is about a teenage girl who goes missing uh, after she graduates high school. She's supposed to show up for work one day and doesn't show up. And it just details her family's and friends' experiences uh, dealing with her disappearance while they try to find her and um, what that's like and going through different channels, um, police, uh, media, and the toll that takes on both her family and friends. Now, I'll keep this brief because, honestly, I wasn't too thrilled with this book. Um, what I liked about it, the writing style, I like Stuart Onan's style. He's very straightforward, but yet in an elegant kind of way. He's very accessible writing. He writes um, very well the details of everyday life. So that was a, a big plus for the book. Um, I have noticed that in a couple other books I've read by him. Um, downside to this book was it's very slow moving. Um, it's very character driven, which in itself is not a bad thing. But as far as um, plot and uh, kind of propulsion, the story does not move forward at the pace I would have enjoyed. Um, it, it, it goes rather slow. Um, and so for that reason, I didn't get through the book in the time amount, amount of time I would have liked to. It took me over a month to get through it. And this book is about 280 pages. It's not a long book. Um, so um, along with that, the characters were a bit flat. Uh, not, to, not so much the mother. I think she was uh, fleshed out pretty nicely. She was kind of had a bit more depth. Uh, but the daughter and the husband were a little bit uh, one-dimensional to me. Um, one thing that Onan does is he gives you the point of view of the mother, the father, the daughter, and two of the friends, including uh, a missing girl's boyfriend. And so I think had he not spread out the points of view so much and you just focused on uh, maybe the family members or maybe two family members and then one friend, it would have um, made the character development a bit richer just by focusing on, you know, a few rather than a bunch of characters. And that would have made the story a bit um, stronger and, and, you know, more meaningful. Um uh, the I kept kind of waiting for something to happen, and this happened a number of times where I was reading and reading and thinking, oh, maybe like they're going to find out more information about her. Um, and they're going to get a good lead, and it's going to lead to something. Um, but that kind of I kind of had to, you know, keep waiting and reading. And there is a, a reveal towards the end of the book, which of course I'm not going to spoil here. Um, but by the time I got to it, it was a little bit underwhelming because the rest of the book had been uh, so, you know, flat. So it, by the time I got to the end of it, it was kind of like it, it didn't matter so much for me. I just kind of wanted to honestly get done with the book and move on to the next one. Um, so with that being said, I gave the book three stars on Goodreads, which I think is a solid rating. I didn't hate the book. I didn't love the book. So like I said, I enjoyed Onan's writing style. I will definitely pick up more books by him, um, but the story and the characters just fell, you know, flat. They were... They didn't live up to my expectations. A couple of recommendations. Uh, if you enjoy books about missing people, kidnappings, um, uh, plots along those lines, uh, I have a couple of recommendations. One is a fiction book. It is a novel called Red Leaves by Thomas H. Cook. It was written, I don't know, maybe in the early 2000s. And that is about a missing girl uh, who gets kidnapped, I think, I believe, while uh, her brother is babysitting her. It's been a while since I've read this book, but I remember that being such a good book. Um, Plot-wise and character-wise, it just really pulls you in and kind of doesn't let up until you get to the last uh, page. So that's a recommendation, recommendation that I think kind of um, surpasses Songs for the Missing. 
Um, in the nonfiction vein, there is uh, a book called Tears of Rage, and that is by John Walsh, who, of course, is the creator and host of America's Most Wanted. And that details his experience um, losing his son in 1981. His son was kidnapped from a Sears department store and uh, murdered. So the story, of course, is very, very sad. But that is such an enthralling page turner. Um, really enjoyable read. One of my favorite books. So I would recommend those two. Um, as far as Songs for the Missing, uh, they're not going to be a reread or anything for me, I don't think. Um, it was it was decent. It wasn't wasn't great. Um, didn't make my list of favorites. Um, but I will be picking up more by Stuart Onan because I really think he's a solid quality writer. And I think uh, he's written a bunch of other books that I haven't picked up yet. So I think I will probably get to those. Anyway, that's it for this video. I will be back with more hauls and reviews. Um, I'm currently reading a book called Bowie, which is a memoir um, about David Bowie, of course. And I will let you know how that is going. I'm only about 60 pages into it. Um, but I will be back with further videos. So thank you very much for watching this one. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.